In this video, I'm going to talk about a new framework called PyCaret. PyCaret allows you to build, analyze, evaluate, and deploy in your model in few lines of code. It helps you accelerate your model building cycle as well as your insight cycle. So I'm going to show you a quick demo and you can see like hardly few lines of code, how you are able to build a model, how you are able to do an hyperparameter search on the model and finally take the model, deploy it and also like analyze the output of the model. And, and all these are like single line command to perform an activity. So let's get started with the code so you get a better understanding of it. So the very first thing I'm doing is saying I am importing uh, the pandas package. Uh, so that I can load my data set. I'm going to use the churn data set that is available in my GitHub repo. And you can just go to the GitHub repo, download the data set and play around. And I'm assigning it to a churn data frame. And this is the output of my uh, data set. So basically I have an unique column called customer ID. I have got a lot of categorical columns called gender, senior citizen, uh, tenure. Uh, tenure is not a categorical column. It's a continuous column, but it's more kind of an uh, interval feature. Yeah, you have other things like uh, monthly charges, total charges, which are more continuous variable. And the target column is churn, where we are we are going to predict whether a user will churn or not. So this is about the data set. I'm going to most to show the feature of this particular PyCaret tool rather than going into uh, the data set itself. So let's get started. So for PyCaret, what I'm doing is uh, I'm importing the PyCaret.classification because the top uh, data set that we have is a binary classification problem. So apart from classification model, it also supports regression models, not only classification regression, the supervised learning, it also supports unsupervised learning models like uh, basically your anomaly detection, you have NLP models, you can do topic modeling with uh, the NLP models, you also have clustering models and there are a lot of other models for support as well, you can go and look at the PyCaret documentation. So let's get started uh, with our classification model that we are going to uh, demo now. So let me just quickly run this. Uh, the very first thing I have to do is I have to just call the setup method. Now what the setup model method does is it creates a transformation pipeline. Uh, so, so by default, the only two parameters that are required is data. I am passing the churn DF that I have created and the target column churn. Right. But if you go to the setup method, you can, there are plenty of uh, features, uh, plenty of parameters other that you can pass and customize uh, the model building process. So you can uh, set up categorical imputation. You can set up your uh, numeric features. You can, uh, if you see here, there are, there are plenty of uh, uh, normalized methods. There are like uh, whether you want to do a z-score normalization or what, you can set your outlier threshold. So you can customize it to your need or you can just run it with the uh, mandatory parameters. In this case, what I'm doing is I'm just telling uh, ignore the customer ID feature, which is nothing but a sequence number. So I'm just giving that. But you can also define your uh, categorical features and numeric features. Uh, but what PyCaret does it by default tries to try to infer the schema for you. So let me quickly run it and I will show it to you. So uh, if you see over here, it has already inferred the schema like gender is categorical, senior citizen categorical, tenure is numeric and others are numeric. So if you're comfortable with the uh, schema over here, you can just go and press enter. If you're not comfortable, you can uh, just go back and define your own schema. And basically, once you run it, you can, uh, it gives you a complete summary of uh, basically, basically the missing value is there. Uh, the other things are completely disabled and for false. The input data set is 7,043 rows and 10 columns, uh, but the transform data set is uh, around 18 columns. The reason is you have a lot of uh, categorical features and by default, the one not encoding is done. So basically it gives you a summary of the model. You can quickly uh, run the uh, output of of the setup method and see and if you go to the setup method you can go above you can see basically the paperless billing uh, uh, is a feature which is yes or no and uh, you can see basically uh, it has created a categorical feature and similarly for other variables also it has already created a one not encoded uh, columns for it right now what i'm going to do now i once i have the setup method uh, the very first thing I want to do is which model works for my particular data set. Uh, typically, we go and run against each and every model. We first run XGBoost or linear regression or logistic regression in this case. So we will we will keep on trying multiple models and see like which works better. We want to keep the simple model uh, first and then go into complex model. But rather than doing that, the only command you need to run is compare model. So in the compare model, I'm just telling folds five. That is, I want to do a five fold 
cross validate and once i run it it's going to go and run all the model and show the output for you so basically if you see the output over here it just uh, kind of uh, uh, running that and it's giving a summary of all the models that it has evaluated and the leaderboard can continuously changes so if you see from the output uh, the extreme gradient boost that is xg boost is giving uh, 0.79 accuracy and logistic regression also giving the same accuracy uh, in my case uh, this is a slightly imbalanced data set uh, so basically i want to look at other parameters like position or recall or auc or the f1 score right so this is this gives a complete summary uh, so with just one line of command here uh, one line of uh, uh, command it can it has run across all the models and give you an initial uh, intuition of what, what models may work better now once you have that intuition you you can go back and uh, run individual models uh, with different hyper parameter settings and see how it works right uh, now let's see what we can do after that so uh, now i see uh, the xg boost is in my leaderboard right so what i can do is i can uh, go and create an individual model so that's what i'm doing over here i'm calling a create model command i'm passing in xg boost and then it will give me an xg boost model so once i run this command you can you can see again it has uh, run uh, against multiple predefined hyper hyper parameters right it has, it's a preset hyper parameter internally and it has run it has given me uh, the different combination of accuracy level for each of the hyper parameter that is uh, it has run and basically i'm seeing like okay the maximum auc is uh, 0.85 or 0.86 rather right now now i exactly have got the model but i can also go and f further like uh, uh, run an uh, uh, random grid search so for that what i am doing is i am called uh, calling a function called tune model it's going to run the hyper parameter search in this in the top it also did it but it has run with predefined hyper parameter now it's going to go and do a random search over here and what i'm doing is i'm telling again is xg boost model i want to run but this time i am telling uh, by default it's going to optimize for accuracy i am telling optimize for, for auc so let me uh, quickly uh, run this and uh, uh, in some time it will start the output uh, so 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 the idea over here is once you have your data set right uh, you can quickly run and see like which model works better and you can also go and do an hyper parameter tuning uh, you want you may want to do feature engineering and all which is outside of this tool so basically you may uh, you may have some domain understanding or you may see like uh, some features correlate and you want to better model it in a different way you want to create ratios or bucket thing maybe you do outside of this tool and then feed it and see like which model works better rather than running individual model sitting hours and uh, just running the training program you can just uh, once your feature engineering is done you can just run it see the output go back do the feature engineering and again run the uh, run this particular uh, command so now if you see the tune model output you can you can see it gives like uh, multiple setting again now in this case like okay 0.84 is uh, the maximum i think 0.8420 yeah uh, is the maximum so now i got a tuned model now now i can quickly run the plot command plot model command on the tuned xgb model with different uh, metrics i'm just trying to plot the auc and you can see like uh, uh, the auc curve is plotted no need to import all the uh, plotting library like matplotlib or cborn or anything you can just use this particular uh, plot model command and if you want to do a precision recall curve you can do it so uh, the plot model pi is going to go and give the precision recall curve and you can create see your classification boundary as well uh, so basically uh, how it's classified so you can see like okay the uh, the uh, blue color is the uh, class 0 that is not churned and this is the churned class and see how it is classified there are a lot of misclassification also as i said the data set is pretty imbalanced so you may have to go back and look uh, do some feature engineering so that it creates better boundary uh, you can plot the uh, feature importance by again uh just running a single line of command you can see uh which are the top features that contributed basically the month on month contract uh, contributed a lot and then there are a lot of other features that have contributed to it you can also create a plot the confusion matrix so the confusion confusion matrix will tell you okay in the case of uh, class 0 that is the user has not churned uh 
the there is a pretty good prediction it it kind of uh, predicted 1374 right and 178 was wrong but in the case of uh, the uh, imbalance class right uh, which is churned uh, if you see over here it's almost only predicted 50% of it so definitely there is some work to do uh, but but here you are not doing manually you are getting the intuition pretty fast so you are accelerating your model building cycle and then you can call the predict model uh, you you are just passing the uh, tuned model that we have when you are calling the predict model it has already kept an uh, uh, test data and it's going to show you the output so in the test data set you are seeing the now the accuracy is 78 and uh, AUC is around 83 you can see your precision and recall metrics as i said this is more to get the intuition of the feature uh, the data set i have given is also slightly complex data set uh, so we may have to work around with the feature engineering and then come back to this right now once i have the model right i can uh, quickly like uh, create an uh, i can quickly see the final model right so you know, come here and i print it and you can see like which is the uh, final hyper parameter that is going to pick the best model and you can also like uh, the the uh, there is a interpret model method where it will give you a shapely uh, visualization uh, so you can see that as well it is similar to the feature importance but it's quite just going to give you a, a shapely value Right. and then you can save the model uh, and when 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 i call the save the model right it not only save the final model but it saves the entire transformation pipeline so if in the setup method you are given a set of pipeline the entire output is going to be saved i can quickly see the ls and you can uh, basically uh, see the pickle file over here the xgboost model dot pickle it's created i can load back my model for inference so once it's saved i can take it outside to any environment i can create a flask application i can go and uh, load this model and in the load model you can basically see the entire pipeline over here it's not only the final xgboost model that is there right uh, i there is also a function called evaluate model which does lot of uh, bulk lifting for you rather than running individual command so basically if you see evaluate model it gives you all the parameter as a table grip if i want to uh, check the decision boundary i can just quickly click the decision boundary i can see and uh, i did it using the plot model command but when you run the evaluate model all of this are already available the feature importance you can click on it uh, collab has an issue with uh, but if you have a uh, issue with showing it fast but if you have your local notebook environment you can quickly uh, run it and see it so there are multiple uh, there are all, all this are available in a single line of command rather than running uh, multiple plot functions that you are seeing on the uh, top so uh, that's about it as i said it accelerates your model building and hypothesis cycle you still have to do your uh, feature engineering to get a better output and outcome over here so that's about it thank you